if you're not following me on Instagram, please do follow because we are uploading many behind the scene pictures and videos there. Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this part, we'll talk about ozone depletion. We know about uh, ozone layer and this ozone layer is actually protecting us from UV rays. So first we will talk about how this ozone layer is uh, undergoing depletion. What are those uh, substances which are responsible for this and then we will talk about that if this ozone layer becomes thinner and thinner and UV rays penetrate into the earth's atmosphere, what kind of a damage will they cause? Thickness of ozone layer is measured in Dobson unit. And this thickness varies according to season. Why this thickness uh, varies according to season? That is for formation of ozone, lightning, thunder, high energy is required. So what happens is oxygen splits in presence of lightning and thunder into two atoms of nascent oxygen. This is how ozone is formed. Now this nascent oxygen combined with molecular oxygen again in presence of lightning and ozone layer, ozone is formed. So this ozone gets added to the layer. So now what is the, which is that season when there is thunder and lightning? That is rainy season. So during rainy season, you find that the ozone layer thickness increases. And then during summer or maybe a part of winter when there is absolutely or negligible thunder and lightning, then ozone is, uh, it goes under, uh, undergoes depletion. Now, formation of ozone layer is normally from the top and depletion is from the bottom. One substance which is responsible for ozone depletion is CFC, chlorofluorocarbon. Chlorofluorocarbon, it was, it was, I'm using was because now it has been banned. It was used in uh, air conditioners or refrigerators. As a coolant. Now it has been banned and the reason it has been banned is the protocol, the treaty which was signed between various countries and that treaty is called Montreal Protocol. Montreal Protocol was signed, it was a treaty signed by various uh, countries in 1987 in 1987 but it was implemented but implemented in 1989. According to this treaty every country has to take care that ozone depleting substances are banned and that is where this CFC has been banned. Developed countries banned it as soon as this treaty was signed that is like around 89 or 90. The developing countries like India we could ban it after a few years because uh, in developing countries and the underdeveloped countries if the products are already formed if you don't use them then it affects the economy of that country. So CFC is the main uh, or it is still the main reason. We have stopped using it for years, but CFC is still there in the atmosphere. How is it still there? Because what happens is 
CFC chlorofluorocarbon in the upper atmosphere dissociates into a substance which we are not really interested in and an atom of chlorine which is highly reactive. This reactive chlorine atom reacts with molecular, uh, sorry, with ozone. When it reacts with ozone, it forms molecular oxygen, which is a good part, nothing harmful, and oxide of chlorine, ClO. But in this process, one molecule of ozone has been broken down. That means it is depleted. Now this ClO which is formed, chlorine oxide, is also very reactive and it reacts with one more ozone molecule to form two molecules of oxygen and this chlorine atom is again available. It is again set free. So one chlorine atom is capable of depleting or dissociating two ozone molecules and that chlorine is again there. So unless and until we remove that chlorine atom, depletion of ozone layer is going to continue. So we have banned CFC, that means we are not adding new CFC into the atmosphere which is a good part but the chlorine atoms which are still there, we have released tons and tons of CFC into the atmosphere and all those millions or trillions of chlorine atoms which are still there in the atmosphere, they are still affecting the uh, ozone layer. So the ozone layer is still undergoing depletion and because of that, there are some areas where we find ozone holes. Now, was, what is an ozone hole? Like on Antarctica, there is ozone hole. Ozone hole is not a hole actually in the layer. It is that area where the ozone layer becomes extremely thin. Area where ozone layer is very, very thin. And this ozone layer is actually a protective layer for us. It protects us from UV rays. But as ozone layer is becoming thinner and thinner and suppose it, if it becomes even thinner, then UV rays would penetrate. Especially UVB, which is very, very harmful to our body. Now, if our body gets exposed to UV rays, then what are the problems which are caused? One, it causes inflammation of cornea which is called snow blindness. And if there is a prolonged ex uh, exposure to UVB then it can lead to permanent blindness. Can lead to blindness that is if there is a prolonged exposure. UV rays also damage DNA that is our genetic material nucleic acid. So if our DNA is damaged the genetic makeup changes and this results into mutations and that can cause cancer. UV rays, especially UVB, can also cause cataract. So there are serious kinds of damages. Not only this, it also causes inflammation of skin. <coughs> So if we get exposed to these UV rays, there are chances that the person may get skin cancer <clears throat> because of inflammation first, then the DNA getting uh, mutated, which can result into cancer. So all these are the problems which are caused if 
UV rays penetrate into the Earth's atmosphere. And what is that structure which is preventing that UV penetration into the Earth's atmosphere? Is the ozone layer. And because of human activity, substances like CFC are added in the atmosphere which are resulting into depletion of ozone layer. And now the countries are uh, taking steps so that such substances are not released in the atmosphere. But a better option would be if this chlorine atom is removed. So research is also going on where scientists are working on uh, something that can bind with this chlorine atom. So if we are able to remove this chlorine atom, the free chlorine atoms, then this depletion of ozone layer is going to stop. All right. So this is about ozone depletion and this is the most important thing that we have to remember. Montreal is a place in Canada where this treaty was signed and that is why it is called Montreal Protocol. It was signed in 87 but was implemented in 89. So this is a very important thing and this was to control depletion of ozone layer. So this completes our ozone layer depletion part.